associated dysfunction or damage of either of the main branches of the bundle of Hiss is commonly observed. The pattern of ECG changes associated with right or left bundle branch block are broadly predictable and you must be able to recognize them on the ECG. If we analyze again the major ventricular depolarization vectors dictating the QRS complex morphology, you will remember from section one that the early flow of depolarization in the mid-zone of the interventricular septum from an intact left bundle branch produces a small physiological Q wave in lead V6 and OR wave in lead V1. This signal is rapidly overwhelmed by the onset of left ventricular depolarization, which moving towards V6 produces a strong OR wave in this lead and S wave in lead V1. Signal transmitted by the right bundle branch depolarizes the right ventricle. But the signal from right ventricular depolarization is usually buried in that generated from the larger left sided chamber. The rapid conduction of depolarization around the chambers by an intact conducting system means that all regions of the ventricular myocardium are depolarized within 0.12 seconds. We will now deal with the ECG findings associated with right bundle branch block. When conduction in the right bundle branch is blocked, septal depolarization proceeds as normal from the intact left branch from left to right, producing an initial R wave in lead V1. Depolarization arriving as normal in the left ventricle then generates an S wave in this lead. In the presence of right bundle branch block, depolarization of the right ventricle is delayed and travels to the chamber by direct cell to cell contacts. Slow depolarization of this chamber moving towards V1 produces a wide second R wave in this lead. Note also that this delayed right ventricular depolarization moving away from lead V6 produces a late slurred S wave in this lead. The QRS complex is broad, reflecting the delay in right ventricular depolarization. The ECG signal of right ventricular depolarization is normally masked by the signal from the much larger left ventricle. However, as right ventricular depolarization is delayed in the presence of right bundle branch block, depolarization of this chamber manifests as a delayed broad OR wave in lead V1 and an S wave in lead V6. Abnormally wide QRS complexes with an RSR pattern in lead V1 and a delayed slurred S wave in lead V6 are the characteristic ECG findings of complete right bundle branch block. Note also that the highly abnormal pattern of depolarization in right bundle branch block results in an altered pattern of repolarization in the right ventricle. Right bundle branch block is therefore associated with ST and T wave abnormalities in the right sided chest leads. These abnormalities are a secondary phenomenon and do not necessarily indicate underlying ischemia or strain. The classic pattern shown here is seen in many cases. However, it is important not to become over-reliant on the presence of the RSR pattern or so-called rabbit's ears appearance in V1 to make the diagnosis. In many cases of right bundle branch block, the RSR pattern in V1 is not identifiable. The QRS complex in this lead, either demonstrating a small notch between the two OR waves, or indeed having the appearance of one large OR wave. The presence of a slurred S wave in lead V6 is said to be more reliable in the diagnosis of right bundle branch block. Also, the QRS complex in lead V1 must be overall positive to make this diagnosis. 
So to identify complete right bundle branch block, apply the following criteria. The right bundle branch of the ventricular conducting system is a relatively thin filament and within the intraventricular septum it lies close to the subendocardial surface of the right ventricle. It is therefore liable to compressive damage secondary to increased pressure in the right ventricular chamber. So right bundle branch block on the ECG may arise secondary to a chronic increase in right ventricular pressure, for example in primary pulmonary hypertension or cor pulmonale, or due to an acute rise in right ventricular pressure in, for example, an acute pulmonary embolism. In addition, right bundle branch block may occur secondary to a wide variety of heart diseases, either congenital or acquired. The right bundle branch is supplied by septal branches of the left anterior descending artery and so new onset right bundle branch block may be observed in myocardial infarction secondary to obstruction of this artery. Amongst many other potential causes, the right bundle branch may also be affected in diffuse cardiac diseases such as myocarditis or cardiomyopathy. Iatrogenic causes are also recognised, such as damage during pacemaker placement or right heart catheterization. You can see from this list, which is by no means exhaustive, that right bundle branch block on the ECG can be a useful pointer towards a diverse range of significant diseases. However, it is important to realise that complete right bundle branch block is also observed on the ECG of a proportion of healthy individuals with no underlying heart or lung problems. The interpretation of the significance of right bundle branch block on the ECG is completely determined by the clinical context. The ECG findings in left bundle branch block are also predictable. When flow in the left bundle branch is blocked, depolarizing signal released from the terminal branches of the right bundle branch moves into the septum. The direction of travel of the depolarization wave within the interventricular septum has therefore been reversed and is now moving from right to left, the opposite direction to normal. This early signal is moving towards V6, resulting in an initial positive deflection in this lead. Depolarization is discharged into the right ventricular muscle mass in a timely fashion through the intact right bundle and as this signal is moving away from V6 we start to see a negative deflection develop in this lead. However as this process is taking place the signal finally reaches the left ventricle from the right side of the heart. The slow spread of signal through the left ventricle dominates all others and as it is moving towards V6 it generates a second R wave in this lead. This QRS morphology is the broad M-shaped QRS complex in the left-sided leads characteristic of left bundle branch block. The initial R wave reflects reversal of the normal pattern of depolarization in the septum, while the second R wave reflects delayed left ventricular depolarization. A very similar QRS morphology is produced in the left-sided frontal lead, lead 1. You should note also that the delayed signal from left ventricular depolarization results in deep, wide S waves in the right-sided chest leads, illustrated here in V1. These are the classical ECG findings described in left bundle branch block. However, just like right bundle branch block, Although key elements of these morphologies must be present to make the diagnosis, the actual appearance of the complexes varies greatly between cases. In reality, the notch between these two positive deflections is frequently not as prominent as shown here. In this example, the M pattern is far less obvious. However, this is left bundle branch block, as the QRS complex is broad and predominantly positive in the left-sided leads, leads 1 and V6. 
an overall negative QRS complex with a deep wide S wave in the right sided chest lead V1 is also consistent with the diagnosis. Also note there are no Q waves in leads 1 and V6. This is at least consistent with loss of the normal early left to right depolarization of the septum. In practice, the main criteria for diagnosing complete left bundle branch block are as follows. The complete lack of concordance between QRS complexes and T waves in left bundle branch block should also be emphasized. In left bundle branch block, this is expected. The grossly abnormal pattern of depolarization produces secondary abnormalities of repolarization with ST elevation or depression in various leads and complete loss of concordance between QRS complexes and T waves across all leads. These changes are an electrical phenomenon secondary to the highly abnormal pattern of ventricular depolarization and do not indicate underlying acute ischemia or infarction. Each block on an ECG is a highly abnormal finding. Significant damage to the left bundle branch is commonly seen in infarction secondary to obstruction of the left anterior descending artery. A new onset left bundle branch block may be the presenting ECG abnormality in a patient with anterior MI. Damage to the left bundle branch in this situation tends to be permanent following resolution of the acute MI and the chronic ST changes associated with left bundle branch block then make interpretation of the ECG at any subsequent presentations with chest pain difficult. The left bundle branch may also be damaged in diseases causing diffuse damage to the left ventricle, for example hypertension, myocarditis or cardiomyopathy from whatever cause. In addition, during part of its course, the left bundle branch has a close anatomical relationship with the non-coronary cusp of the aortic valve and consequently Left bundle branch block is seen in diverse diseases of the aortic valve. 